I did some uh, deep fried jalapeno poppers mm -hmm. stuffed with cream cheese, mozzarella cheese, and gooey goodness. Oh, wow. for the gooey goodness. Oh, a little like ranch good. dressing on the side for you. Who we got coming to dinner today? Joe Exclusive. Joe. Celebrity stylist. We are going to learn so much tonight. Okay, it's cool. Cool. Okay. Okay, cool. Hot I need a stylist. I need a <laughs> you looking good. <laughs> it's that red on top of that chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> red on top of that chocolate. That's Can't what go wrong. keeps me off them dating apps. Yeah. Oh, oh, the oh, dating apps. Right. Uh -oh. You know, uh, have y'all ever experienced like racism? on a dating app before? Oh, yeah. Or Absolutely. like uh, sexism yeah. or something yeah, no on a black, dating no app? Asians, it's crazy. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. Mm. Uh, it is crazy. I just put other. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I tell you what, these are something <laughs> other out of this world. <laughs> okay. So y'all go ahead and eat these. Oh, Thank you, I just started on Thank dinner. Thank you so much. You in a minute. Oh, so you think it's about a strategy? Yeah, I think, you know, you got to kind of figure it out and see what's going to work. Um, what do you think, I mean, when you're scrolling through there and you see know this or know that, particularly if it's something that represents who you are, mm -hmm. what's your reaction to that? Well, you will be shocked to know. I don't know if you guys are on Grindr, but you know I've been on maybe a couple of years and I just kind of picked up, kind of using it more in mm -hmm. recent times. But Grindr just recently removed the racial preference option. Mm. Oh, really? Uh -oh. Which sounds like a good thing, but uh -oh. it just basically means that like you're going to get rejected more. And so, because oh. how so? How so, so? Okay, so I could have put, you know, I prefer African American males. Mm -hmm. So then I put that in, and it's going to only show me the African American males in my area. Okay. They removed that, so now I can no longer put race as a descriptor of what I'm looking for. I oh. see. So, so you just see what's in your area. I can in look general? at. I can look at position, top, bottom, verse, mm -hmm. top, verse, bottom. Uh, I can look at, uh, let's see, area, maybe body type. Mm -hmm. Maybe there well, are talk about body type. Okay, when, when you say like body a, type, like what is that? Like a bear or twink. You know, mm -hmm. so someone thin would be a twink, a bear, someone bigger. And Thank hairy. you for explaining that. Yeah, there's, you know, so there's all these other, <laughs> and and other criteria that you can use to, to and hairy. replace, but okay. race is has been removed. You Wait, know, I right don't now, understand that though. Chinese how people. how is it how is it racist when it's a, a matter of choice or preference? And if I am not interested in that, then why would I want that in my algorithm? Mm. Well, I think it's a PR go ahead, thing. Go ahead. Yeah, because the you know for for the users, I liked being able to select African American because it's your preference. That, well, I kind of have an open preference, but I you know I feel like on that day when you're looking for that. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, because you can right. change it each time. Yeah, so you can change it. Exactly. Yeah. You can change it oh, okay, each time. So it's like it's shopping. Oh, OK. <laughs> you know, I want the shoes in blue. Penis. I want them in red. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have black pinners tonight. Oh, it's like Amazon. <laughs> OK, hey. So, you know, so what ends up happening is you get you know, all these people who don't like black guys. They either just don't respond. So what I've started doing is I will send you a message. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to send my ass pic because okay. I think that's one of my best features. All right. Okay. You think it's your best feature. You know, my well, best that's physical feature. You put it's your up best to you right part. there. Yeah, I yeah. agree. So I send out my little ass pic and I'll give you a few hours. If you do not respond to my ass in three hours, blocked. Oh, okay. That way, <laughs> don't like reject Vegas. my that, ass. That, thank you. That's right. You're not going to reject me. I just rejected you. There. Oh, so if right you don't respond in three oh. hours, that's what that is. I love well, it. God and I block, if you're busy. What I blocked every bitch in LA. 
<laughs> now, what if you had, like, put, can you put a pen in it? Like, you know, if you scroll and you say, okay, I like that ass, I'd like to come back a little, I gotta come back after I get off work. I don't care. You should have took a break. I don't even send a hello. I just send a picture of my ass. I, I would get blocked, because I would ignore that. <laughs> you have too much class for that. I would ignore it. Well, maybe that. You're not even you sending a picture about. of your face. Well, you see, sitting... my, my face is on there, so you already see I, my oh, face. Oh, profile has it. My profile, oh, your profile. Has, has my face, so, yes. My, but then yeah. you send an ass no, pic. You get the professional me, the, and you get the, the sexual yeah. me. Oh. Is that what your rationale for doing that? It's not a job interview. Oh, well. Well, it sounds like it might be. That sends a message at you. This is what we're here for. You want it or you don't? like, now, yeah, I mean, there's a there's there's a time limit here. You ain't got all day to be I playing don't. around. I, 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 hear, I feel thing. you. This we, is not. We're talking about racism Ooh. on. <laughs> we're, we're talking about it on that apps. apps. Wait a minute, racism on apps. I personally would say that it would have been nice if they were going to, rather than removing the race, because I think it is practical in terms of mm -hmm. you know when you're putting in what your preferences are, but maybe editing some of the language that they write in right. the profile body that really starts to identify people who are racist and, mm. and anti-groups and things like that. That's their psyche, so, they can't hide it. Yeah. But isn't that a slippery slope when it comes to preference? Well, it's one thing to say that you don't, you prefer something, but it's another, to, you know, no fats, no blacks, no Asians. I mean, that's no just fams. hostile language. No that's, fams. Like, and that's, that's kind of hostile, that, don't that you think? That language is very common in the black community. Like, so many of that's those. True. That's true, that's true. It all often leads no, no fats, no fans. No fats, no fans, absolutely. Yeah. You know. How do you guys feel about the top, bottom, verse, versatile top, versatile bottom? I think a lot of things nowadays are a little bit more verse than back in the day. If you're a bottom, you know, there's a bottom shaming. Mm -hmm. If you're a top, you have mm -hmm. to be very manly. When you have, you know, drag queens often, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard, you know, a lot of times they'll a lot be of their, tops. A lot of their tops. Yeah. yeah a you lot know, of I was shocked. I, t I told you, I, I was with a guy, and when I can't do it, I allow my partner to go seek who can. Mm -hmm. If it's something I, you know, I swing from, you know, ropes from left corner across the bed. I do that well, but, you know, I don't do other things well. Right? Uh, you don't want to talk about that. Cheryl. You play to your skills, You don't want right? to talk about those steel handcuffs. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was shocked, and I told you my guy went to, went to prison early, mm -hmm. and that was basically his first experience. And uh, when he ended up saying to me he wasn't gay, and I was like, you, he wasn't like the rest, and I was like, well, what do you mean? And he says, you know, I don't, I don't take it. So I was, uh, the very first Ooh. time I realized that someone feels like because they are the giver and they don't receive, it's like this is all discombobulated. Can, can we pick up on that? Because I, I think that's a bit, particularly in the African American community. Yes. yes. This idea that if you're the receiver, that you're somehow less. Mm. Oh. So it's like guys get to say, well, I'm just the giver, so therefore I don't need to be saddled with the baggage the that stigma. comes with and the stigma, there you go. And but, it should uh, never be a stigma your, If at you're all. putting your penis in another man's behind, though, I know. how do you get to get off without what goes along with that? Well, I'm sure he gets off very well. <laughs> <laughs> wrong wrong word it. choice there. <laughs> but here is the reality. The reality is we have a new world. It is a new world, absolutely. People say it's when you go back to normal, no, embrace this. This is it, this is it. <laughs> Well, I, I would imagine people still make the choices, I think, that make them feel good. And when they're reaching for the feel good, um, those ha they have different degrees of risk that they're willing to take. And so the pandemic just maybe increases the you risk guys, factor. I cannot believe that story that I told about the guy coming in with the gloves and the mask. And I'm just like, OK, no problem. I didn't. It never occurred to me that how dangerous that was. And that is a fault of mine. But I know I will never be in that situation again. Oh, good I'm glad you. to hear you say that. <laughs> But right when Corona hit, you know, uh, a lot of people were skeptical. I was skeptical that it was a real thing, and the, the, the I, you that know, invited was up in there. invited this guy over from Grinder, and I left my door open. I told him, I said, just come in, and he walks into my apartment, mask and gloves on. I'm thinking, oh, he's just gonna take it off. So he comes over, and you know, I'm like lying in the bed, and then he kind of just starts rubbing me with the gloves on. <laughs> And I'm just, you know, the sexuality of the whole thing just immediately went away, and I'm just sitting in bed like... You're thinking, like, oh, God, is that you? <laughs> it's one thing for a rubber, you know, a safety... No. A sa yes, yeah, a condom, condom no problem. Right. But gloves to touch my beautiful ass? I uh, hear you. I was, like, offended. and But then it got even worse mm. because he starts, like, rubbing around and and looking in there, 
and like poking. <laughs> I'm like, is this an ass exam? Right. Looking around, like probably giving him dirty looks. He's and then like, he just gets up and walks out. And oh. the whole experience, he never said a he thing. He's not picking up Ooh. on that one. <laughs> I think a good thing you got out of there was your life. Yeah. Uh, yes. That that was what you know when you when I heard about that, I thought. But yeah. you know, uh, other people, I I've, I've heard other people say, oh, you can hook up in COVID, you know, just do it safely. And you know, I've seen people with selling masks that you can wear during sex. Now you just made me think about the number of gay men. You know, we we talk about openly transgender women being murdered and transgender Ooh. women of color being murdered. But what we have not talked about is black gay men who have been murdered by tricks. You literally let someone in your house by your own permission with a mask on and gloves on so you can't recognize them mm -hmm. and they have left no fingerprints. Right. That was mm. So, so Crazy. outside of the sexual pleasure that potentially would be derived, you have completely set yourself up for no recourse but if I, anything I happens to you physically. So, okay, hold that thought, show, because oh, what yes. we're going to do is let's get into these appetizers, oh, and then we're going to come back and get this dinner started, okay? Pop yeah, Sean, okay. I'm okay, another. yes. Jalapeno. I want another one. <laughs> I know, right? Why well, is Sean, my food always You know fun? she want another jalapeno these, pop. These, these, aren't, these aren't the kind of poppers Antonio's used to. Uh oh oh. oh. <laughs> my guest has arrived, and, and since we got dinner being served, uh -oh. let me go and okay. welcome. We'll Hello. Hey. Yes. Right. How are y'all? Right. That's right. Sanitation. Mwah. All right, come hey, on. How you doing? So, yes, so, yes, so, yes, yes. So, hey, hey, girl. Hey, nice. Love the hair, girl. <laughs> yes, <laughs> You understand, Mama didn't give me enough attention. You got too okay. much or not enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's one to two. Oh, we get it now. You are Thank beautiful. You so much. You're hey, Chef. Emmy's, Emmy's cute. Yeah. All right, that's Chef Sean. Oh, I know I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> what else? And my that's great answer. Right. That's great answer. Right. So we got a uh, little meat, meat and potatoes no, for you. Work. Meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Can I Enjoy. take a moment? Let's take good. a moment. You just modeled the perfect response. So many straight men get offended when a gay man compliments, compliments them. them. Oh. You just modeled. It's a compliment. Yes, I know I'm attractive. Thank you. And I'm brilliant. Oh. Hey, I love you. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 And the food is delicious. That's it looks awesome. They're bringing <laughs> together, bringing minds together. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yes, no. you. No, we are I loving your style, baby. So nice. Thank you so Thank much. You. Love you. You know, I, you know, I had to go a little fashion forward because you know you're I'm all like, about what? fashion and style. <laughs> Celebrity stylist, so I, I said, it. let me come and come to the table and bring it. You know, yes, you brought, you brought it. With the it. <laughs> and look at you us. And actually, we're all like coordinated. Oh, like yes. red, black, black, oh, yeah. black, white, black, white, I red know. hair. Yeah, like, I know. So we could be a group. Destiny's Child. Hello. Oh, yes. Come on now. Oh. <laughs> I well, can hit on now. I love another Destiny. Destiny. Okay. You have another <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> How do you identify in terms of gender and gender expression? Like, what kind of terms do you use for yourself? Um, for myself, to be honest with you, I am just a gay black male. Okay. Um, mm. It's so funny because everywhere I go, people mostly, 99% of the time, refer to me as her or she. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, in no shape, form, or fashion, try to be a woman or even... Mm -hmm. My style is just androgynous, mm -hmm. and it's different, so. Mm. And now with these masks, girl, they can't tell a difference. And I, <laughs> I, I, look, I have my mask on, and then <laughs> right? they don't know what's going on. Part, and then I'll, my voice will come out or something, and I'll be like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll be like, tricked you. <laughs> okay. Was this from a young? So, you know, I got beat up when I was little, if I am. You, know, you know what? I talk I'm, white, and I did it. When did you start owning your power? I've I've always been like this. Um, I, from as long as I can remember, maybe it's like seventh, eighth grade, I started experimenting with hairstyles. Mm. You know, like back then, like, of course, like Bobby Brown had the Gumby and stuff like that. Yeah. I started wearing my hair kind of like a Gumby, but it was more stylized. So it was like the wavy going up, and then I started adding a little bit of blonde in it, you know, mm. like, the, like Kwame, he also mm -hmm. had the hairstyle. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, but mine was a little bit more like, you know, silky and curly and, mm -hmm. you know. So I experimented seventh, eighth grade, then through high school. So I've always been different, and I've definitely went through it and, you know, been teased and, and you know, so I've been through a lot with it. What would you tell the youngsters? Right now. Right now, they have it easy, to be honest with okay. you. Okay. Like, right now, I mean, I've been, you know, gay for 
a long time. Okay. <laughs> um, when, when it wasn't popular to be gay. So mm. um, just growing up, you know, it was very hard. Um, you know, you couldn't really express yourself the way you can now. Like now, it's if you you know, say you're gay and somebody's against it, you know. They're gonna get they it. Will, yeah. They're gonna get it. Yeah. I, I love that. I've never seen that yeah. in my life. The, the youth, it's they like take black up for each matter. other. Yeah. Ooh, they don't play. It's so sad for us in our black culture because it's, you know, more of the white culture, it's been like that for, like white and gay is, you know, popular and it's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Black and gay is like, mm. So do you think it's how you present? Truth. Because what happens, like you said, you, <clears throat> It's um, a very androgynous look. We make more andro androgynous choices that it's going to incite more um, rebuttal. I think, um, you know, first of all, there are so many types of gay people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, you know, the straight looking and acting. Then there's the feminine and there's, you know, it's just, it's all types. You mm -hmm. can't put them in a box. So That's true. Um, I think everybody should, be who they want to be. Like, I've been in instances where people be like, actually, when I first even got introduced to the gay world and culture, my friends, two guys, I met them, and they were, you know, they looked, like, if you saw them on the street, you'd probably think they were straight. Okay. okay. So that, they they were, you know, they kind of inspired me, but they were, you know, also, like, you don't have to be flamboyant and, you know, all that to be gay. Mm -hmm. So for me, that gave me an alternative, but I was like, this is me, so I'm not going to, try to look straight and act straight and and do those things but um it works for different people you know you just have to stay true to who you are that's just the bottom line you know of what it is you know? i really relate when you said i am not in any way trying to look like or be a woman mm -hmm. and i feel the same way about myself um i have the highest respect for women mm -hmm. and so i don't ever say that as mm -hmm. you know to down women but when i went shopping you know i'm not how can i look like a woman i just look for what, what i like. like yeah mm -hmm. sure you're right when you're doing your style consultation, do you bring that um, sort of non-gender, more androgynous um, philosophy to how you would style your artist, uh, particularly if you're creating a style mm -hmm. for them? With me, I mean, and it's so funny too, because even with my job, a lot of people, some people may not hire me because they think I'm all this. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to bring to the job Ooh. or to the client. Mm. Almost, they're almost scared to let go. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. what happens is it. it's, it's, it's so funny because sometimes the managers or the publicists, they'll be like, oh, he's not going to wear this, he's not going to wear that. Prejudging wow. me mm. because of what I am. So they think he's not going to wear, wear a red leather coat or a, a white leather, you know, just mm -hmm. things. And the the things that they all say he would never wear or he would never do is the first thing that the artist wants to wear and do. Yeah, because you're giving you're giving people permission. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When, we, mm. when they look at you, yeah. they I want that, that permission yeah. mm -hmm. to be free. And it be it who happens they are. every time. That's like, wow. when you every walk time. in the door. Yeah. You like oh. And it's like you know that's why you hired me because you want to you know so it's it's a you know it takes some getting used to but it always works out you know. Fashion is fun. Do you have favorite yes. clients? Um, you know what, I, I work a lot differently from most stylists. Mm -hmm. All my jobs and things are usually from relationships. Mm. I've been a stylist, I've been in this business over 20 years. Wow. And I've been a consistent stylist for 20 years, wow. working with the top people. Um, Creator is good. I don't go after people, like if Beyonce called me right now, or Mariah Carey or whatever, and was like, oh, can you style me for free? Or if their people call me, I'd be like, okay, bye. Uh, <laughs> even for Beyonce and Mariah. If, if it was for free, right. it would be goodbye. I'm a businessman. I'm about business. Know and, your work. And if Beyonce and Mariah are making money, I'm going to make money as oh. well. You know, so for me, Beautiful. I don't go after, oh, I want to work with you. I want to work. Mm -hmm. I'm not thirsty. I'm not. Never have been. You know, I'm just a person that I love my life. I'm fabulous. You're fabulous. We can work together. You can be hungry. Just mm. don't be thirsty. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> okay. Girl, there you go. Come on. What you say? Definitely. Do you have a, an underlying inspiration or something that is your go-to that um, is kind of what feeds your energy around your style? I, for me, I just wake up every day blessed and I treat each person. Um, you know, I listen, first of all, to whoever mm. I'm working with or whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's always a bigger picture. 
it's never just about clothes. Mm -hmm. um, especially in this, you know, day and age, it's so many other variables. Um, so it starts with the clothes, you know, like, and I'm sure you've talked to like hair and makeup people and, you know, they feel like they're therapists and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So um, with each artist that I work with, I may think about, you know, how can I do my part to help brand this artist, mm -hmm. to make them the next big thing. Oh. Um, I've been a part of a lot of stuff. Like I've, I've even discovered artists. Like um, who? Keisha Cole. Oh. She's one person that I met in a studio because I was working with Maya at the time. Yes. And um, so Keisha Cole was in the studio doing like a demo and I took her and literally created everything about her hair. Like I dyed Whoa. her hair, you know, this blonde and red color. Um, I set up a photo shoot and threw a party and had Maya introduce her and had let her perform and wow. invited the president of Geff and A&M, Ron Fair, mm. and he signed her on the spot. This, oh. this happened in a matter of two weeks of me oh. meeting her. Wow. Um, You're an earth angel. Yeah. Um, wow. A producer named um, Hitmaker, Youngberg. Oh. He's somebody yes. I, he flew out from Chicago. They flew him out. Wow. And I um, took him to Kevin Lyles and got him a record deal on the first day of meeting him. So I've, I've discovered, like Eve, I worked with Eve from the beginning of her career before she was signed to Rough Riders. Wow. So I, I always... How'd you me, get into it, baby? Where are you from? I'm from the Bay, girl. Well, you know, okay. we pop our collars, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we pop our collars, girl. <laughs> Speak on it in the yeah. house. So I'm from, you know, Bay Area, Richmond, California, small city yes. near mm -hmm. Oakland, San right. Francisco. Yeah. And you know, there it's not much to do, you know? So you, for me, I watched TV and you know was watching, you? yeah, hip, watching Puffy on TV, Ooh. and it was a video he did where he was in a hot tub and yes. you know with him Big and Lisa and that. And that me literally, I was a hairstylist, and me literally sitting in the hair salon watching that video, that image on the screen, it it took me from my little city of being mm. this little young gay boy mm -hmm. to knowing that on that screen I could, I felt like I could reach in that screen mm. and be in that picture, in that video. And I um, I manifested it. I, I, oh. I did little mm -hmm. things like I called the record label and literally got him on the phone. I, you know, so it's just little things that show me, okay, I could do it. I just, you know, came to Hollywood and, and, and I wasn't even, like I said, I was a hairstylist in the Bay Area. I never even went to school to do hair. Like, I just mm. went to the hottest salon and was like, I want to work here and started, you know, <laughs> shampooing and answering the phones and then doing hair. And oh so I was self-taught. And then when I moved wow. to Hollywood, um, my first client I bumped into was Russell Simmons and Kamora Lee Simmons. And, um, and, you know, we just basically hung out. Our connection was cool. So I started doing her hair. And then I called back home. I'm like, I called two of my friends that did hair too in the salon. I'm like, okay, y'all got to come to Hollywood. This is where it's at. <laughs> So I had, um, his name is Dr. Boogie. Um, I, he's a, like, we went to high school together and, and did hair together, not licensed or anything. Wow. So I told him to come to LA and I let him start doing Kimora's hair. Then I started doing our clothes. And then I just went on and started doing You called wardrobe. back home and gave a break. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about your story is mm -hmm. your commitment to lifting other people up. Uh, yes, absolutely. I, I love that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's something that in our community um, we struggle with sometimes. And so whenever I hear other other African Americans in particular who just naturally it's not like you're, it's a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And, I think and you've that done that, that many really times. Inspired. I've heard you say. I, you know, I really try to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm all about how do you use your privilege and power? Mm -hmm. How do you oh. use your privilege and power to lift others? Yes. And that's so important. So you touched my heart. Oh. This, 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 this. And I wanted to ask, what kind of challenges did you face early on mm -hmm. that you could advise someone? Yeah, in this business, um, you always have to be careful how you treat everyone. Um, because mostly everybody in the business, if they stick in the business, it'll be the same people 20 years later. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been in the business, like I said, 20 years, and the people that were here and started here are now the top people at all the everything, mm -hmm. whether it's the record labels, the, you know, so the same players are in the game. I hear you. So you don't want to mess up your relationships early or at all. Right. It is a very small industry. Very small industry. You've got the celebrity world, mm -hmm. then you've got the gay community. Mm -hmm. How does that affect then kind of the interactions in, within those communities? The reality in life with a lot of gay people 
sometimes gay people put themselves in a box. Mm -hmm. And it's just a gay world. Everything is gay. They only go to gay clubs. They only do gay stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't do the straight mm -hmm. world. They don't do the, you know. And that unfortunately hinders a lot of us mm -hmm. gay people when you do that because it's a whole world out there. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, you know, the safe space may be the gay world, but it, if you want to be successful, if you want to do a lot of other stuff, there's a whole world out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think how I learned it is because I grew up in, you know, a hood city with straight people. Yes. That's who I hung around. That's what I was used to. Um, so I didn't, like I said, when I was finally introduced at like 22 to the gay world, I went to that world and hung out and stuff too. But I know I'm a businessman and I knew I wanted more for myself um, because sometimes the gay world is just about one thing. You know, it's about, you know, it could be about writing checks or credit cards and being fabulous and clothes and just doing things the wrong way. And, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of gay people don't feel like they have a lot of opportunity um, or they don't fit in the world, so they don't go out and do their dreams or goals. So it may mm -hmm. be the balls or the houses mm. um, is what they go to. Um, for me, I saw that world, but I was like, mm, that's not for me. I was like, I'll create my own house, but my house is gonna be an actual working house. They're gonna, you're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing hair, we're gonna be doing this, we're gonna be doing, you know, it's gonna, gonna be a real money. productive yes. house. Um, and it's not going to be based on that. It's going to yes. be, like, real, you know? Mm -hmm. And the illegal uh, direction is not the direction. Yeah. <laughs> I got caught up. I went to the joint. Yeah. But after six previous arrests, mm -hmm. I had a family that had ghetto inner city money pay off the judge mm -hmm. in the judge chambers, judge and prosecutor standing there with them. Daddy then sent the money bag. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was all a game. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why, you know, and uh, hurting inside. So the legal way for the youngsters, mm -hmm. it, the game is it's, it's not the way. Yeah. And you saw that early on. You always want to be open to the world, mm -hmm. not just, you know, the gay world. You want to be open to the world because you want those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to mix and mingle with everybody, right. you know. I so um, identify with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, I, I share that with you in terms of I've never thought that being black or being gay meant anything was inaccessible to me. Mm -hmm. And so I've never had to think about whether I deserve to have something or I belonged in a particular mm -hmm. place. So I set my sights on the things that I wanted. And I've been in environments that you wouldn't expect uh, openly, and I've always been an openly gay man, mm -hmm. to even be able to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, I say, I, I was the executive vice president of a nonprofit run by a church, mm -hmm. a black church. Wow as an openly gay man, never any kind of negative experience mm. around it. Mm. Because I think my self-respect and confidence leads first. Mm -hmm. And so how you respond to me, you, you already know. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we talked about black people and respect. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think that's so important. You, I hear someone here who has self-respect and that doesn't mean you don't have fun and that doesn't mean yeah. that you don't kiki and, <laughs> and do all that. But at the end of the day, when you have a certain self-perception and a certain um, care for self, yes. then those outside forces mm -hmm. that want to validate you or the outside forces that want to tear you down yeah. can't be successful. Yeah. Exactly. Because they'll try, but yeah. it's like, yes. okay. I'm human. We're human. It, exactly. No, and then no to be a giver, me, too, no that's the recipe mm -hmm. right there. And being a giver on top of it, oh, you right know, there. it's How just you amazing. Have fun? Let me tell you something. I'm a workaholic I, because I love what I do. Mm. The t like 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., mm -hmm. I'm in front of my computer. I'm working. I'm doing whatever I do. After 7 p.m., these braids come down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I do stuff. I like work hard. I play hard. I, you know, I treat myself. You know, what do you so do I, for yeah. self care? Um, you know, masseuse. You know, massage. Love a massage. Oh. That's my next thing. Yes. Is, is to have a personal masseur. Mm -hmm. Who's on the payroll? A personal uh, nude masseur. Oh, oh God. Well, that too. That too. <laughs> but every morning to still I used to be a masseuse, 20 plus. Oh, nice. And I ended up connecting in a relationship. And he was older, and I was young, you mm -hmm. know, and chasing this ghost called Hollywood. And this man put me in a cage. And I went to school in Ohio for, from, uh, cosmetology, mm -hmm. and they ended up calling me the beautician from hell. <laughs> <laughs> it got me a badge, okay, right? You, you know what? On but that you know, note, let's go ahead and take a pause. She's the cage beautician from hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so... <laughs>
<laughs> so go ahead, dig into this meal, and we're going to come back and just thank y'all. So we got Cheryl out of her cage okay. again. <laughs> cage booty. I'm out. Oh. And, and I know with the drag fashion that that, you know, it's a, probably a, a, a little bit of a weird comparison because drag fashion can be a bit extreme and costumey. Mm -hmm. Yes. So talk a little bit about how just fashion in general and particularly what has appealed to the gay community with fashion and what that influence may be like. So maybe not so much drag because that can be a bit on another level, um, but just in general with our community. Gay is fashion. Basically, most gay mm. men, women, whatever, you know, love fashion. That's like one of our go-tos, one of our safe places where we can individualize ourselves. Mm. You know, it, okay. it speaks volumes. If you see somebody, it kind of speaks to who they are, their personality, who, you know. Um, right. And it's, gay fashion heavily influences, I think, the world as well as the industry and, and your friends, you know, you have girlfriends, they like, oh, we like your style. They want you to style them. Mm -hmm. They want you to, you know, dress them. They like your, you know, so it goes a long way. That's right. Um, with, you know, gay guys. And now it's so dope because even guys now, they used to be, you know, wearing just certain, you know, like jeans, t-shirt, are right. now experiencing with fashion. Um, so tons of guys, not only in the industry, but everyday guys are now wearing pink jeans. Trying and, to figure it and out. And skinny jeans. You know, flavor, yeah, right? skinny jeans and Euro, right. Euro fit. You know, it's not about the sagging so much no more. Right. Um, and are jumping in with everything. So now we got some That's competition. <laughs> like the, the boys want to be fabulous, too. Uh -huh. okay. That's a good point. It seems like gay men sort of push the boundaries mm -hmm. and create a space and freedom. We talked about freedom. We talk about freedom quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This is really what people want is to be free, right? So Oof. people are usually afraid. Mm -hmm. So gay men are like those pioneers who step out there boldly and That's take right. the chances and yes. get beat up or whatever right. happens along the way. But ultimately it creates space for mm -hmm. others to find themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned there briefly that men are changing and being more open in mm -hmm. terms of their wardrobes. Are you seeing more straight men in the fashion arena uh, as stylists and or designers, et cetera? Yeah, men now, I mean, you, like, a lot of the designers are straight men now, where mm -hmm. it used to be, you know, most designers were gay men. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now, like, I have a showroom downtown LA, and most of the guys in the building are straight men designers. Mm -hmm. And this wow. is like Kanye and his friends, and, mm -hmm. you know, Virgil Abloh, a designer for uh, Versace tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. So now, I mean, you know, guys are wearing everything. Look at the Migos, mm -hmm. look how they dress. Yes. Look at Young Thug, he mm -hmm. wear, yes. will dress, wear a dress in a minute. Uh, yes. Jaden Smith, you know, like, you know, yes, a right. lot of guys, Pharrell, he's a Chanel mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. And they're wearing, actually, um, unisex clothing or women's, even mm -hmm. women's clothing now. So it's, it's so much more open now. You know, fashion Good has point. truly transcended. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Do you feel like, I, I hear a lot of times people feel like this, and fashion sets sort of this tone, the emasculation of the black man yes. in particular. Mm -hmm. Like there, it, the only way for black men to exist in America mm -hmm. is to be emasculated. Mm -hmm. And we're all conspiring. Gay people, mm -hmm. the right. fashion mm -hmm. industry, the movie industry, we've all gotten together in a room and decided mm -hmm. that we're going to emasculate men yeah. by doing all these things. What's your take on that? It's sad in a lot of ways because, you know, especially in our black culture, um, people, we judge men if they're soft or if they cry or if they're, mm -hmm. you know, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes with fashion, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of girls, you know, and a lot of black women, you know, judge if a man is wearing something, you know, that's not, you know, if he's wearing a, a pink blazer. Pink oh, that's, uh, that's soft, that's feminine, mm -hmm. that's gay. And it's, it's a piece of clothing. So, hmm. unfortunately, we don't even let our black men really explore what they want as far as fashion and mm -hmm. art and different things. And that's, that's really a hindrance for our whole race. Mm. For the whole globe, um, yeah. Really. For our race, S starting with it. us. You I know? mean, for the globe. If, if you know, if people <laughs> can't be free, you know, then it just affects every area of life. Mm -hmm. They're oh. not going to be as happy. They're not going to be as productive. They're not going to be That's all true. that they can be. It's very true. Absolutely. Very, they, they'll hide it inside. Mm -hmm. How do you help someone guide their original style? What's kind of your mechanism for helping to drive someone? It's into? really all about making that person feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, when you feel comfortable 
and you know you feel that nobody's gonna judge you you'll be more open to try things. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to give the go-ahead because some people are nervous. I just did a photo shoot the other day with a young new artist, but mm -hmm. in the shoot, like, I, I dressed him in, like, patent leather, leather jacket and mm -hmm. uh, Christian Louboutin shoes, like, silver shoes, like, completely different from his style. He said he'd never dressed like that before. Mm -hmm. But in the shoot, his mm -hmm. confidence, he felt like you could tell he felt good. <laughs> Nobody could tell him nothing. And at the end of the shoot, he told me he was like, I was so nervous today. I didn't, I was, I was like, really? I, I was like, you could have fooled me because he showed no signs of, wow. and, and he said, he, this is stuff he would never wear before. Excellent. But he was out of his comfort zone of the, where he's from mm. and he could oh, be himself. he was in a safe space. Yeah, he was in a safe space and he felt comfortable. And I, I didn't know him from a man on the moon, so I couldn't, I couldn't even say, oh, he probably wouldn't wear that. He wouldn't do that. Or he just, he, he carried it off himself. And he and, said the and magic word. He felt comfortable. He felt comfortable. That's and he, all and he sold everybody it wants. To where yeah. at the end, he was like, you know, free. Uh, free. Oh, yeah. free. Wear the clothes and don't let the clothes wear Ooh. you. Mm. So it's not, it you know, don't just stand there like this. You know, like, play with the clothes. Let the, you know, just mm. okay. get dry to wear you. Okay. Yeah. I love it. And okay. daring to be different. You know, that everybody just, wants to be free. I'm in a very tricky place, too, because I'm so androgynous. So yes. even dating for me is hard, you ah. know? Mm -hmm. Because um, most gay people want guys that look like them, straight-looking guys that mm -hmm. we go to the gym together and nobody knows we're gay. You know, mm -hmm. that's like a real big thing. Or yeah. everybody's a top mm -hmm. and they don't mm -hmm. want bottoms or, or even weight, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, no f uh, fems or fats or, mm -hmm. you know, just, it's so many Always things. I've, I've only been in a relationship with two gay people my whole life. Everybody oh. else has been straight guys because mm -hmm. I'm more like a woman to them. Mm -hmm. And So how do you explain that to the straight community? Because the straight, the straight community is going to say, okay, well then how are they still straight if they engage in a relationship with you? A lot of guys come to me like, oh, you're cool. You're not, like, you're different. So like, I usually don't you. mess with gay people, you know? Wow. Yeah, so... Um, it's, it's just a different thing. It's just, I'm feminine, you know, body. It's just different things that yes. make them attracted to me. I'm attracted to them because okay. that's what I like, and they're attracted to me. So it's hard for me to get a date with a gay guy, like an outright gay guy. Mm. You know, I think tolerance is, is always available. It's, it's the tolerance will bring um, an understanding because people are scared of what they don't know. I've been to prison. I can't hide. I didn't just get it by chance. I got it because I've been through hell. Can I and judgment is crucial. To tolerance, Cheryl, that, yes, that term is a very, I it, see it as it, a stepping stone term. It really yes. disturbs my spirit, it did the term to me tolerance. As well. Because <laughs> tolerance is to put up with mm -hmm. until you can get rid of. Mm -hmm. And so anytime someone, especially a straight person, mm -hmm. suggests that they'll tolerate me, mm -hmm. that, that's not a gift. I'm Again, not interested. Language. Mm -hmm. I can't get to acceptance before I find some type of word to calm yeah, these a, fools yeah. down. A stepping feel, stone concept, yes. but I, I think to, yes. I think it's a stepping stone concept it and is. I get it and I'm like so beyond like that part of the journey. We want more you know, than tolerance. It's, it's yeah, I'm talking here. about the ones that are still killing, you know, transgenders and, 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 and gays and, and just really on this rage. Because personally, gay people are not too thrilled about straight people either. I gotta tolerate your attitude towards me. You know, first thing I gotta do is tolerate you to be around you, especially when you continue to come with this incense, this self hatred, because that's what it is. That, when you sure. are constantly attacking someone for absolutely nothing, they are being nice to you, they're doing all they can to get along, and you are constantly trying to find something wrong, it's because you hate what you see when you look in the mirror. And that is a fact. I, I feel if you like, are, like if you love yourself, you can't help but love. And I it took a long that. time for me to figure that one out. Don't yeah. think it's about you. But tolerating something means in, in some way that you're actually having to put up with it. And that we it have is, to put up with each other. We in don't society. have no. to do anything. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm first, we, we got to live here. We don't have to do anything. And, and let me tell you something. No, no one I'm going to repeat it one more time Listen for to this. everybody. If I we say don't I am gay, to do which I don't even claim a title anymore, nobody going to make me gay. Nobody going to make me straight. I'm a sucker 
when I want to. I'm a sucker when I want to, and that ain't nobody's business. Hey. The first thing I gotta do is make you understand we gotta live in this world together. Mm. You're gonna tolerate me for just who I am, because guess what? I ain't changing for you. You are not going to tolerate me. That's number one. Tolerate me. Then my me. prayers, I, we is... can talk about and we can become accepting of each other. I don't have to fight you. Yeah. I got time. I, well, I don't believe that you have to tolerate me before you accept me. I believe that you can jump right to acceptance or not acceptance, and wherever you land, you land. And on that note, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and then continue with dinner, and we'll be right back. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the fashion icons. Oh, well, before we do that, mmm. That looks good. Sweet treats. Enjoy yourselves. You got yes. crepes with uh, bananas and Nutella. Thank you. A childhood me. favorite. Yes. Enjoy, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Hi. Hi. Yes. So I just keep thinking about some of those uh, fashion icons like Tyson Beckford and um, Naomi Campbell and uh, Tyra Banks, some of these, these really great um, models who kind of represented uh, black fashion and kind of um, uh, in some way carried the torch because they didn't necessarily pave the way, but they were able to have these sustainable careers and created these images that are now mm -hmm. I'm not sure. We don't kind of have the, the age of the traditional supermodel has kind of gone gone yeah, because yeah. now they're using actors and mm, uh, yeah. reality stars, influencers. And influencers. <laughs> so, what's what's your take on that role of that sort of black icon personality in um, the industry? I think that that you know, of course, has been very important in. Um, fashion, um, you know, people like you said, the Naomi Campbells, I mean, there's so many of them. I mean, we can go to Beverly Peels, or Pat mm -hmm. Cleveland's, mm -hmm. um, even like Beth Ann Hardison. Um, yes. And, and, you know, people that were a part of, um, it, I mean, there's so many, like so, so many. Um, the supermodel is gone, but what I do like now, like right now, like, and it's very like new because of the Black Lives Matter and just black, 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 mm. that they are including now mm. a lot more black models. You know, it's taken Thank this you. whole world thing to, to happen. Um, mm. So now they're starting to put faces on magazines and, and stuff like that. Um, there's a black model named Alton Mason. Um, he's a black young male model. Oh, yeah. That he's like the new Tyson Beckford. Yeah. Mm. He's on every campaign, like Louis Vuitton, you name it, he's every brand. Um, to where he even did um, like some flips on the runway at the last Louis Vuitton show for uh, ah. Virgil, you know, as a designer now. Um, that they, they actually made into sculptures that they actually have at the Louis Vuitton store in front of the stores from his, his flips that he did on wow. stage. Mm. It's only right now in a good space and going into more designiners are using black models on the runway. Um, so I, I think, say a lot for you to say that. You've yeah, been in the business but it's 20 just, years. It's literally just now. Like, if you would ask this question I was, I was um, built you with six months ago, oh. <laughs> it would be a whole, different, a whole different, different story, you know? Mm. That's good. Um, Interesting. Do you think this is going to be a fad? I'm just mm. curious. Um, I hope it's not a fad. Um, I hope that, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people don't, like, speak up and, and have held the fashion world accountable. I mean, I know we say it, but I think it's so much more to do than mm -hmm. could have been said before. Mm -hmm. um, like even a lot of people, like Andre Leon, Leon Talley right now, he's speaking up against Anna Wintour mm -hmm. um, now, cause you know, she's kind of kicked him to the curb and he has a new book coming out. Ooh. But all these years, we never saw him say anything Decades. Um, right. about it when he was next to Anna Wintour. Mm -hmm. Like Beth Ann Hardison, she's been stern for it for years. Mm. You know, like black models, black models supporting whatever she could do to get them in there. And you know, she's the one that discovered Tyson Beckford. Wow. So she's been a, a very pivotal person for that, for the movement. You know? We need our white brothers and sisters right now. Yeah. And to see this happening, most of all for our youngsters. It's a moment in time. Yeah. And someone asked me, is it a fad? Do you think this Black Lives Matter is going to pass? And I said, if it lasts one more second, I, if, it, if it goes away tomorrow, just to know that Black Lives Matter got written in front of the White House, it, it's worth my and, life. And to me, that's not even enough. That's like, I don't even like the slogan, Black Lives Matter. 
Oh, I'm not what, in love with it. I will, I won't let you say it. I'm going to give my What slogan would you like? Would it, I don't should know, it have I mean, been? I just think we more than matter. Oh. And, and we're more than a life. Yeah. You know, to me, it's like, I'm like my life is not a color. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's more than matter. But there needed to be some type of language. We're back mm. to language. Yeah, it's a start. It was I would a almost start. rather start. black people matter than black lives. It, I think the, the coloring of my life, it mm. trivializes it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So. I think I'm more than a, I think I'm more than a life. I think I'm yeah. an eternal soul. Yeah. Oh. Black eternal souls matter. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't quite have the same ring. <laughs> they might have had the same <laughs> ring. They might have tried that first. <laughs> they might have it didn't, it didn't pass the focus group. When you, know, when you go back to what was Black Lives Matter in reaction to, yes. the abuse of black lives. So it was the taking, that, the, the, the taking yeah, the murder of black, of black men and women. And so as Taking a result, lives. that's where that yeah, came lives, from. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we, I, 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 you know, it makes me think of the, you know, Tyson Beckford and Beverly Johnson and different ones. We always have the token, yes. you know, the one that we think yes. is going to break this whole thing open mm. decade after decade. And then we go, we get lulled right back into complacency to the way things were again. But, but you know what we have to do? Um, and this is my, like, biggest, like my biggest dream and goal. I want to create a company like LVMH. Um, well, LVMH stands for Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. And that's basically- It stands for what? Let me hear Louis you. Vuitton Moet Hennessy. Oh. So it basically is a conglomerate that um, houses all these fashion brands. Mm -hmm. mm. Because we as black people, we, we feel like we have to be, you know, Vogue or, or just any of the white you know, media, fashion brands, et cetera, to be validated. Yes, like the award shows, you know, we need to get an Oscar or hmm. Emmy or a Grammy to be validated. Tell me about it. And won't what show we, up to the BET Awards. Yes, and what we need to do is put our own power back into the fashion world mm. and create our own brands, our own platforms, our own things, so we don't feel we need to have to be on CoverGirl or, mm -hmm. or or, you know, any Louis Vuitton. Our power right. is in our buying and our spending mm -hmm. um, as black people. And we keep right now, we're investing it right back. Like I was on Rodale Drive. I literally just look around and it's full of black people. They're spending their wow. unemployment, their PPP, their SBA. <laughs> on Rodeo Drive? On Rodeo Drive, like lined up, Stimulus waiting. Stimulus no. checks. Stimulus checks uh, literally lined up to spend put their money right back in the white for pockets, validation. you know, for validation. Because we've been so beat down and so Yeah, we've been so beat down, and we're going to continue to be yeah. beat down. We need and to still wanting to be on these magazine covers and wanting to do this yeah. and wanting to do that. Not because we're not creating though. our own, you know, valuing our point. own. That is a good mm -hmm. point. It kind of brings up this question of segregation versus integration. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we'll have that conversation which suggests that we should separate and have our own and just do our own stuff, right? And then we live in a society that's bigger mm -hmm. than, than us. We're not a sovereign nation within this nation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're a part of this nation. And so we have, uh, we, we make up a small percentage of this, I think about 12% mm -hmm. nationally. But our spending is... Oh, our spending is in the way, billions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but where I'm going with this is, even within that small percentage, we have different views on whether we should have an integrated approach, mm -hmm. whether we should have a separative separatist approach mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. the whole reaction because we're always reacting right the whole reaction is to be a part of mm -hmm. right so we were fighting for integration and we've spent the last 50 years trying to get in and then looking back over 50 years and saying damn uh, we didn't get the payoff no. of this investment so where do we go from here mm -hmm. um, go ahead. yes and to add to that that we don't have a trust factor with one another. So when you look say at that, other, say that again, please. We don't have a trust factor with one another because Absolutely. we don't have. If you think about the Jewish community, the Italian community, that you've got all of these other ethnic groups that will, that 
Asian communities, um, every city you go into, there is a Chinatown mm -hmm. that is exclusively a Chinatown mm -hmm. where you've got Chinese people living in that town. They have Chinese banks. They mm -hmm. have Chinese schools. They have Chinese libraries. And they actually... Korea, the, uh, Korea Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they funnel these dollars amongst themselves back and forth within their communities. And so we don't have that. In fact, when we, when we have these uprisings and riots and damages in the black community, it's because we don't own, we don't have the commercial spaces in our communities. We don't actually own the businesses there. We mm -hmm. work in those businesses because these other groups will employ us mm. to work there so that then we can be that face to make everyone feel comfortable who comes and supports and shops. But we don't have the commercial lease. Mm. We don't actually have the space. So because we have this lack of trust for one another, there is not this commitment to support one another and actually engage and then create this sense of power and control in our own space. And oh, speaking of our own space, <laughs> you have been such a delight in our space. Mm -hmm. And yeah. unfortunately, we're going to have to go ahead and draw this dessert to an end. Aww. But you were the sweetest thing. Aww. Absolutely. That sweetest we had at the table. Sweetest pie. <laughs> <laughs> you better than Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and, you for coming. And we have a saying here at the house. Once you come to the house, you're what? Always, Always family. family. Oh. <laughs> so thank you for being a part of our family and sharing your amazing journey and special talents, which you know I certainly appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so thank much. You thank you so you. much, Joe. <laughs> Until you come back. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah.